Bowman in Tennessee. Engines fired, drivers making their way out of the racetrack. DW, let's take a look at the STP starting with Greg Biffle's third career pole. Yeah, first one uh, this year, and uh, Cat's coming off a win last week. Probably the guy, one of the guys everybody keeps pointing to to beat. Casey Mears in a Dodge making his best career start. Now, DW, curious about this racetrack. You mentioned in the pre-race show that last year the drivers were complaining there wasn't a lot of grip. They seem to be more attuned to it now. Yeah, well, what guys are telling me is that they have actually gone up a couple of hundred pounds on their right rear spring. Uh, that, that means that there's a lot of grip out there. When you can stiffen that right rear spring up, that means the car is really, really hooking up good. A lot of guys are uh, maybe up around a 500 pound right rear spring. That's a lot of spring for a track like this. Several drivers will have to go to the rear of the field. You just saw Stacy Compton. His car was qualified by David Green. So the 59 goes to the rear of the field. Kerry Earnhardt had to pull up, a, pull out a backup car. He goes to the rear, as does Kenny Wallace for an engine change. Ron Hornaday Jr., Shane Hall, Brad Teague also making it in changes. Tony Rain, the 33, also was suffering an accident in practice, bringing out a backup. I think you're going to see uh, Steve right up here in the front. You know, we got the 60, the 66, the Dodge, 21 cars. Uh, you know, Jeff Green's been driving that car, and he's one in it. Uh, I think we got all the winners right up in the front of the field tonight. I think you can probably get the first four or five pick a winner. Is it a coincidence that the first or the only two races we've had here at Nashville, we've had a first time winner? Well, it's a, it's a new racetrack. And I, it, sometimes, you know, the, the more experienced teams will figure it out quicker. We haven't had any what I would call surprise winners. And I think that's because when you got a new track, the crew chiefs with the most knowledge, the drivers that adapt the quickest, they usually win the races right away. Let's take a look at our Loterman Ultra race analysis. Ambient air temperature, as Larry Mack likes to say. Oh, 82 yeah. degrees. Oh, he'd be going off right, right now. Look at that. The concrete. <laughs> He's got temperature oh, yeah. for both. Concrete temperature, asphalt temperature. He can tell you how hot the grass is. <laughs> <laughs> he tapes oh. the weather channel. It's all I've ever seen. <laughs> Three cars starting. What about that pit window, DW? Yeah, it looks about right. 70, 75 laps. Uh, you know, this anywhere else this would be a one-mile racetrack, but here in Tennessee it's a mile point three. I don't know if they couldn't figure out how big to make it or what. <laughs> so that's about right. I'd say about 70, 75 laps. Great crowd here tonight, DW. Yeah, we got a packed house. Uh, they got 25,000 permanent seats here on the main in the main grandstand, and they added some uh, additional seating down here on the uh, turn four area. Another about 5,000, so it looks like about 30,000 folks here tonight. Some standing room only crowd. It's a beautiful day. Has been all weekend here in the Nashville. Yesterday was great. Let's take a look at our onboard cameras for this evening. Be riding with Kenny Wallace, 48 car, the Stacker 2 camera. How about his singing, DW? Yeah, good thing he can drive a race car. <laughs> Stacy Compton on board. Johnsonville Brots on camera. Johnny Sauter in the AC Delco car. He's warming up those tires. Hey, we Jason Keller was a pit reporter last night. I heard he was. How did he do? He did a fine job. Good. Albertson's on board. He sure don't know the words of Sweet Home Alabama. We found that out. <laughs> I think he had to be eventually <laughs> bad. <laughs> Mike McLaughlin on board. Lights are off and off the pace car. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, they're coming around here. Uh, they're down into turn three. Getting ready to take the green flag. And, of course, the three most famous words in racing will be uttered here very shortly. Just saw the onboard look from our Briggs and Stratton cam and Greg Bill. Hammond, he did Hammond over phone. What's wrong with that guy, Hammond? <laughs> All right, his car is off. It's oh, up yeah. to you, champ. Here they come. Coming down here, Anita Cochran into the flag stand, looking them over. She's got the green flag in her hand. And here they come, here they come. Green, 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 go, go, go. Buggity, 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 go for it. Jump. Holy cow, he's out for about a 10. Arling, please. Chase Sauter in the 21, tucks in behind him. Oh, you got 
to be ever so careful in the first couple of laps here. You know, low air pressure. Got a really tippy toe in here for a lap or two. Really got to watch that outside. Don't get forced up into the loose stuff. As we see it far back in there does. Pretty clean start so far. That was a good start here. And he's in a backup car, Daryl. He practiced in half or wrecked in half the hour. Had a, had a good start. Oh, trouble already. Turn two. Here we go. David. 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 Scott Wimmer in the 23. 56 of Richard Mitchell. And no caution flag, Daryl. No, 56. What happens? He did a slow spin right there coming off of turn two. Wimmer just had to wait, wait, wait for him to kind of see where he was going to go. And Wimmer got through uh, without any problems. I always hate that because, as you can see, right from where the spin started, back, everybody had to check up. And leaders of the game, like a half a lap, because the guys back there with the record had to check up and wait. Jason Keller in the 57, battling Tim Sauter. You're riding with Mike McLaughlin. McLaughlin underneath Sauter there in the 19. So we can see what happened over here coming off the of turn, too. Caught that uh, 56 car, he just gets to doing a, doing a little bit of a hospital wobble there. And uh, did a slow spin. Wimmer did a great job of staying off of it. The joy, too, the step just missed. Everybody kind of... Miser Manners gets through there without any real problem. How about it, Jeff? What happened over there? Girl, but I do know that uh, Scott Wimmer, Wimmer Radio and it told uh, Booty Barker, his crew chief, he said, I didn't hit anything, Booty. And Booty come back to him and said, don't worry about it, guys. Just get back in your rhythm. Everything's going to be okay. we got a long ways to go. Well, Jeff, you know, last week we saw Wimmer. He won a lap down early in the race at Dover there. Got back on the lead lap. They made this some great adjustments on that car, and he ended up finishing, like, what, third or fourth. So uh, he knows how to run these concrete racetracks. Got a good average finish here, Booty. I think what the situation is with uh, Scott Wimmer is the fact he's got a lot of confidence in his crew chief right now. And Booty said the team is really starting to come together. Last week was no surprise, and he really expected to run really strong here tonight after a great practice session Friday night. And just saw problems for Tony Raymond at 33. We mentioned him a second ago, Gerald. That's a backup car. He got very loose on the back stretch. Well, you just, you know, when you go to a backup car, it's never, even though guys try to do a great job of having an extra car in the trailer, you never put the effort into that car that you did in your primary. And so you're already behind, you start from behind and you just can't get caught up. Here's the PPC racing teammates looking out the back. Jason Keller to his teammate, Scott Riggs. You know, see, one of the things I think you have to have to be successful in this series and, and the reason why Biffle and, and some of uh, uh, the 21 cars, the car, cars, uh, is Winston Cup connection. Whether it's a car program, an aero program, engine program, some connection to a Winston Cup team. A lot of these cars get their engines from the Winston Cup team. Uh, Probably the end of 21, obviously getting help from uh, from Jack Roush and from Richard Childers. So uh, these are, I think that's what it takes to be successful and why they kind of separate themselves from the rest of the field. Battle for 11, Ricky Hendrick, the five, and Hank Walker Jr., he was uh, in the booth last night. I'm yeah. telling you, he's got talent. Yeah, I think he does. saw Tim Sauter in the 19th, so you're playing he's not. Hank Parker Jr. having a nice run. But Randy LaJoy, just behind him in the seven car, has been having a lot of problems early this evening, and Jeff Hammond knows why. That's right, guys. What happened to Randy early on before you saw that? Oh, trouble down here, Jeff. Sorry. Hey, doing? Oh, got Joe trouble Buford. off turn four. Joe Buford going around turn four here. Should bring out a... Well, I don't say it should. I don't see a caution in the yet. Joe's going. Nope, no caution. No caution. I'm sure that they all thought there was going to be a caution. And uh, Biffle must have jumped on the brakes. And I'm thinking if I was his spotter, I would be hollering it to, you know, trouble off turn four. And I'd be looking for a caution. There's Jay Sauter trying to lead this lap in the 21. Jack Sprague in the 24 just behind him. You know, W. Sprague said that Nashville in April was a turning point for him and Blue Chief Dennis Conner.
there because they started already to make the transmission. You know what? We're not racing trucks anymore. We're racing bush cars. Let's take a look at the replay. We can see what happened here. The 49 car just gets around. I think, yeah, that's what happened. Joe Buford, uh, Fairground, races out the National Fairgrounds every weekend and gets a chance to run a bush race every now and then. Just behind him, and Darrell started to say they thought that the race here in Nashville was a turning point because they finally said, Hey man, this isn't a truck, this is a bush car. Different animal. Oh, yeah, totally different. 105 inch wheelbase car, you know, uh, aerodynamics are totally different. Truck has, doesn't have a lot of aerodynamics, uh, and these cars do. I have really been impressed with the job that team has done to get themselves up to speed as quickly as they have and to be a factor every week the way they have been. Let's go back to uh, Japan and Jeff. As we start to say a little earlier, before Joe Buford did his little number off the floor, Randy LaJoy got together with Scott Wimmer and that group early on, and it actually cut down a left front tire. And because that left front tire going down, he also tore up the left front fender. Daryl, you know that when you lose that downforce on the left front, you're going to have a long night unless they can get that fixed. Oh, yeah. The, I mean, the left front fender on these race cars. It's, it's so critical. It keeps that corner of the car kind of planted. It's the, it, it, the left front fender is huge. And that's where you make all your aerodynamic downforce. You, you lose that, you're going to pick up a huge push. The car will not drive well. Under caution for the first time tonight, Kevin Grubb in the 54. We are just about to <laughs> brag on it. Hey, we're running 10th, and uh, we, Steve and I were just talking about him running a pretty good race so far. And the next thing you know, it's round back with him. Hard into the outside wall. Kevin Grubb, three of the last four races have been top ten finishes for him. Started the race tenth this evening. The thing about the concrete, when your car is loose, uh, it's just not very forgiving. Uh, the, the thing will come around on you unexpectedly. Concrete gives you just a totally different feel than, uh, than asphalt does. And if your car gets loose on a concrete, it just never lets you know it's going to come around with you. We can see it came around on Kevin Grubb. No other cars involved in that accident. It looks like the leaders are heading to pit road. I'm thinking these guys are probably pretty glad to see this car. It's just 62 laps. Uh, it's not quite to the fuel window, but we're, we're getting close. Good time to come in, and now you can get a good reading on your fuel mileage. Get you four fresh Goodyear Eagles on there. Be ready to go racing. Go to Jeff Hammond. And the leader, Jack Sprague, brings his car to the pit. Right now, they're going to make an adjustment on it. His car has been real snappy loose from the center out. Jack said he's really having to feather the throttle to make it work. So he's got to make some serious adjustments to air pressure to make that work. Matt Yoakum? Jeff, on the bottom of your screen, the 25 car, Bobby Jr. You heard his crew chief, Fred Blanky, say the car was tight pretty much all over. They're going to adjust as a 24 lead. They're going to adjust with air pressure. They thought about adjust. Just going with air. Still under caution for the first time this evening. Kevin Grubb brought up the yellow. One car spin. He's gone to the garage. Heavy damage to the rear of his car. Getting ready to go green this time by, Steve. So uh, doubling up over there. Got a few cars a lap down. Tough break for uh, the two car because he just went a lap down. Jack Sprague is the leader. On the race off pit road, followed by Hamilton in the 25, Biffle in the 60. Double file restart. And uh, my experience has been, been cautions, precautions. So we'll have to see how this works out. Guys have gotten in, uh, made adjustments to their cars. You're going to see guys that wasn't very good uh, all of a sudden show up in the front. That's a, that's a good thing about that caution. Like I said, it came at a good time to make the right adjustments to your race car. Three car breakaway. 
Is that a mini wad hat? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that three car's not, those three up there, that's not a mini, but oh. back here and behind them is a huge wad. <laughs> Sprague in the 24, Hampton I mean, Jr. in the 25. They're knotted up, they're wadded so bad. This is ugly back here. Ooh, Ooh Mike McLaughlin. What does it look like? Oh, my. Men are full wide coming down front straight. This, like I said, after a caution, it gets right exciting for a little while. Until they can kind of get themselves sorted out. Staying me on the 47. Just saw him alongside Hank Parker Jr. Here comes Bobby Hamilton Jr. I believe that old Fred made the right change on the little hot rod that time. Probably adjusted air a little bit. Said he was a little tight. Hey, I'm curious, DW, how quickly can you find out if you've made the right adjustment? Uh, probably by the time you hit the first turn. The driver usually knows. Uh, you know, depending on what kind of condition he was complaining about, he hits that first turn, he knows if they fixed it or not. And, and you got to have the confidence in your team and that they did what you asked them to, that they fixed the problem for him. Boy, Mike McLaughlin has got a problem. I think he's going to end up in the pits here. He just keeps going back. Yeah, he backed up in turn four a couple of laps ago. He's hung up on the outside. He could have picked up a lot of debris on his tires, but nonetheless, he's going to be, he's going to be in trouble. and got a great race. Those two cats that everybody was talking about, the 60 and the 25, they are coming to the front. Whoa, Biffle. Yeah, Biffle. No. That was one of those eight fields are better than four right there because he put us, he slid in there underneath of a spring and almost took them both out. Here we go. There's the 18 in trouble. Blocking hard into the wall. Crossy comes out for the second time this evening. He was having a problem and I think he was trying to maybe decide what it was and uh, found out the hard way. Talked about Mike McLaughlin. There he is to the upper left of your screen. Yeah. Changing the field down on the apron. Woo. He might have hit the dirt. I tell you what, uh, he was trying, trying to, to unwad. <laughs> oh. oh, my. It's the 18 car. Now, we saw him in trouble. Backed up. We knew he had something wrong. Goes down in the corner. I think he was having a tire problem, and he just couldn't make up his mind what it was. Looks like the right rear was down there if he bounced off the wall. Under caution for the second time this evening at the Nashville Super Speedway. Restart will come at lap 75, DW. Cautions breed cautions. You had just... Pace car is off. Take a look at the biggest movers this evening. Top motor nights come from the rear. Hamilton Jr. in the 25. Well, he got caught in a, in a problem here in April. He got caught in the pits, went down a lap, battled all the way back to finish third, so he knows he can get the job done. You know, same thing happened to him at the New Hampshire. 21, he had to battle back. How about it, Jeff? Well, you know, bud. Had it with Kevin Grudge. Kevin had a great run going. What happened? I'm not real sure. Uh, two uh, cars that were flat when it came in. We don't know whether that was from the wreck or, or before, but... Um, Actually, the Toys R Us cars had gotten pretty good. We, um, you know, we were loose to start, and then it actually tightened up, and uh, you know, once the sun started going out, I was happy with the car. And we were, you know, moving forward. And, um, next thing I was banging in the wall. It's uh, real unfortunate, but um, you know, it's something we're gonna have to work on. You know, fix, fix this car, and uh, you know, get ready for next week in Kentucky. He'll get him next week in Kentucky. Uh, Matt Yoakum. Well, Jeff, the 60 car, Greg Bibble restarted in the third position. But there is some concern. Remember back to last week, Greg Bibble was having alternator trouble. Under this caution, his crew chief, Randy Goss, told him, cut down as much of the electrical equipment as possible. Goss, alternator trouble again? Yeah, we think we got some trouble. We, uh... We're not sure, so we just had him shut down the stuff to start with, save the battery for us. That's Randy Goss. Remember, Bibble scored his first career win here at Nashville. It felt like this would be a great place to see if they indeed had their crew back. He currently runs in the third position. You know, I don't quite understand that, Steve. Uh, Jeff Burton had a problem in Charlotte with a battery and an alternator, and they blamed it on the alternator. Uh, Bibble, again, last week at Dover, even though he won, 
Same thing, had something going wrong off there, had to cut off his coolers and blowers off. Here we are again tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to get bit by the same dog twice. They seem to be getting bit quite a bit. Hank Parker Jr. there in the 36 behind Todd Bodine. We're speaking with Jeff Hammond. One of the guys right now is a victim of cutting down a tire and getting the walls, Mike McLaughlin. Mike, what, what happened? Evidently, we just cut a tire on it, restarted something. Did right. right. We should have come in with a lap sooner. Then I went down going into one, hit pretty hard with the left side. We got to work to get it back out there, but we'll get the MBNA Pontiac back out there and try and get some points. You hear it? Hanging there right now, they're working as hard as they can to get some more valuable championship points for Michael Clausen. From up here, Jeff, it, uh, he was he was struggling with the car, and there was something wrong with it. And uh, we knew he was going to come in the pits, or he was inevitably going to end up in the pits. Not like that, though. That's unfortunate. Todd Bodine there in the 92. Hank Parker Jr. just behind him in the 36. And Bobby Hamilton Jr. continues to lead. Jack Sprague. Oh, it's a pretty equal match, Steve. They run similar lap times. Uh, that time by, 25 car ran a 31.40. Four car ran a 31.42. And actually, Biffle back there behind him is at a 31.20. So is a Jay Sauter who fell back there for a while. He's at a 31. Time. So those third and fourth place cars may be chasing those front cars down. Jeff, what happened to Jay Sauter? What's going on, Daryl? Is his car still loose? Instead of getting tighter, like I thought it would be, when the fuel burn off, it's staying loose. He says, "Honey, I can't turn the wheel without losing the tail." The butch Hill told him, "Hang on, buddy. Give me a little more time. One more pit stop, and we'll get it right for you." One other guy I want to kind of point out, Daryl, who's made a really good run, run from the back of the pack in a brand new race car is Tony Reigns, the 33 car. Came all the way dead last. He's now running the 14th position. Yeah, you're right. That's a, that's a good catch here, uh, Jeff. 33 cars up there in the 14th spot. We saw him Early in the show, trouble. it looked like he was going to be in trouble, but uh, obviously they made the right that adjustments Jeff. on the cars. Good. That's a good thing, you know, a backup car, if you can get a caution and make it a couple of fine, a couple of adjustments on it. You don't have a lot of laps on that particular car, and it gives you a chance to work on it. Oh, 28, Brad Baker. He's a lap down. Uh -oh. Jack Sprague's going to use that to his advantage. Yeah. Using for a pick. Bobby Hamilton Jr. got caught behind him. Uh, Baker there, I can sure he probably thought Baker was going to move down. If Baker's a Nashville cat. He is. Picking on the homeboy right there. Baker. Yo, Sprague. Sprague's got a pretty fast car. That traffic they run up on there uh, really is really allowed Biffle to close up in this pack. Todd Bodine in the 92, Hank Parker Jr. side by side looking from Johnny Sauter's viewpoint. There's LePage in that 37 underneath Parker Jr. Yeah, that's Jeff Burks' car, uh, the 37 car. Uh, Kenny Wallace uh, around the inside there. In the stacker car. Battle for nine. LePage underneath. Todd Bodine in the 92. Todd's doing double duty. Okano, Nashville. We're doing double duty. Yeah, we are. We're going to leave here tonight. Head on back up to Pocono or back up to Pocono. We'll be doing the same thing again next weekend, folks. Steve and I will be in the booth. Jeff and Maddie in the pits. We'll be doing the Kentucky race. Then head over to Michigan. Go to Michigan. Ashton Lewis Jr. has just blistered the wall, DW. Pushing out for the third time. The window net is down. His sign that he's okay, but his race car is... Oh, boy. I mean, he backed that thing in there a ton. Looking right at it. He went down into turn three over there, and the back end just came around, and she went hard into the outside wall. Boy, look at the damage to the rear end of that car. Yeah, it, it, she took a hard lick. He's a tough little kid. I know. And, uh, he's had some great runs. Yeah, they just they have a problem closing the deal. They'll they run real to. well, and then just something happens to take them out of contention. Came in here 15th in points, qualified 15th. Ashton Lewis Jr. making his 69th career start, and here come your leaders of pit road. Once again, uh, Steve, a pretty timely uh, caution flag. 
for the leaders. Uh, we haven't made it into our fuel window necessarily, but we're right on the edge of the uh, with these last two cars. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Yeah, with the time when Jay Sauter comes in, Butch Hilton has told him, hey, your car's a little loose. I'm going to make a wedge adjustment. I'm actually going to go down one round in the left rear. You can see right there, the gas man's adding one round in the left rear. Hey, yo. Well, Bobby Hamilton Jr. felt like the 24 car was better on entry than his car. They made a chassis adjustment. He said his car was just too tight. Meanwhile, Greg Whipple and the 24 beat Liberty off their road. Whipple's car, he was close. So they're going to unhook the rear sway bar. What's happened so far this evening? Early the 56, Richard Mitchell goes around, Scott Wimmer avoids. Then Joe Buford in the 49, he spins off four, nobody else involved. Bad luck for Kevin Grubb in the 54, he's in the garage. Mike McLaughlin on lap 72, flat tire, bang into the wall. Jack Sprague, meanwhile, in the 24, battling with Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 25. And our most recent caution, Ashton Lewis Jr. in the 46. In the wall, we've had four lead changes, three cautions for 13 laps, five cars out of the race. Jack Sprague is the leader. He's led twice for 60 laps. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. And Steve down here in the 10 pit, Harold Holly one here. Back in the spring, Harold, no adjustments on the first stop. What about the second? Yeah, we, uh, we wanted to see which way the track was going to go. Uh, we knew the conditions were going to change quite a bit. It just wasn't real sure when. First run, it was awful, awful free, and we just put tires on it. That run there, it started to get tight through the center, so we made a little adjustment for that. We'll see where it gets to uh, what we need for the end here. A good stop by the over-the-wall guys. They came in seventh. They will restart from the sixth position to Jeff Hammond. Matt, we had a little bit of a situation down here in the 24 car. During that last pit stop, front tire carrier Jeff McKinney came off the wall and left his leg went out on him. Right now, they take him to the infield care center to see exactly what the extent of the injury is. Right now, Carson Ford will take over his responsibilities. That was the reason for the extended caution. They needed to get him loaded down to the care center. They believe he's going to be okay, but he does have some problems with his knee. All right, thanks, Jeff. Back under green. Jack Sprague at the point in the 24 car. Boy, not only Sprague, not only Sprague's car fast tonight, but he is killing them in the pits. I mean, he gets in and out of the pits. He's beating everybody out by two or three seconds. They got the whole package tonight. And Gerald, I'm really impressed with the rookie Casey Mears in the 66. Boy, he keeps hanging around that top five. Boy, it looks like he got a good car tonight. Uh, that's a Dodge that we mentioned in the opening, and there's only two in the whole series. And uh, they're both running pretty good tonight. He's only had one top 10 finish this year. There he is in the 66, just in front of Scott Riggs. I think you take a kid like that on a track like this where you don't have, and nobody has a lot of experience, that's kind of an equalizer for a rookie. Uh, everybody comes in here kind of with a lot of unknowns. And sometimes that can play to, his, to the rookie's advantage. But Randy LaJoy in the 7, Jay Sutter in the 1 1, side by side. Hamilton Jr. just behind him. And uh, of course, the 7 car is uh, a lap down. He's actually two. Laps. Yeah, he got down two laps early when he had to come in for a flat tire on lap 11. They're racing hard. Uh, like to stay in touch with the lead as long as he can, just in case the caution came out. Might be able to get one of the laps back. I'm not a wad expert, but that looks like a wad. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Greg Biffle right in the middle of it. You see Randy LaJoy to the high side. Casey Mears just ahead. Biffle riding fifth. Casey Mears just ahead of him fourth. Casey's best finish this year, a fifth at Talladega. You want to do with a wad is let it kind of work itself out. You don't want to, you don't want to have to unwad it. Hammond. Steve, I've called up one of those Nashville cats. It's John Michael Montgomery. John, what do you think about the race tonight? I love it, man. It's awesome. It just, uh, I mean, if you can't get excited over this, you can't get excited over anything. I'm ready to. One of these guys need to break him and jump me in, put me in code. So you ready to go boogity, 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 as Darrell Wall would say? Oh, yeah, baby. I'm ready to boogity, 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 yeah. I got one question for you, John. Have you heard Darrell saying you want to make it to Nashville? 
Back, back, yeah. back to the booth. Yeah. Back to the booth. Back to the booth. <laughs> Thank you, John. That's right. Back to the booth. Let's see if Daryl can uh, do some more working on his singing, guys. I think that no answer was... Uh, a, man, a long pause. A really long pause. Hmm. I believe I could hold my own with that crowd Hammond was working with, though. No Ken, doubt. Kenny Wallace maybe had a little bit of a, you know, he could carry a tune, but he was the only one. The other guys couldn't carry a tune in the bucket. Man, the rest of them were lost in the East Coast. Slow leaks, all of them. Oh, bad leaks. See, Jay Sauter in the 21, he's second. Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 25 is third. On board with Greg Biffle, he's fourth. Casey Mears hanging in there, the rookie in fifth. Going by Johnny Sauter in the two car. Jacksbury came to Nashville with the points lead. We've got racing left. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Racing in. On board was Stacy Compton. W. He was one of the guys that had to start at the back. He made a driver change. David Green started the car. Meanwhile, Greg Biffle. In the 60s, Scott Wimmer in the 23, they're battling for fourth. And they are, and they are battling too, and the 23's not giving up. I mean, he's right back in there beside the front. Uh, down the back. Scott Wimmer wears a Dick Trickle t-shirt for luck. I'll tell you what, uh, it's not a bad t-shirt to wear. Because he grew up in Wisconsin, Scott's uncle Larry Deegan. This was a great driver. There's so many great drivers came out of the Midwest. And Oh, we got a car down here, guys. Turn two. Right. Yeah, he's got one in the wall. Man, he's right in. He's in a terrible place. Ooh, don't move. Cost that out for the fourth time this evening. Lap 160. Dan Partis in the 32 into the wall and turn two. Window net down, you see Partis putting the steering wheel up on the dash. Window net is the sign that the driver's okay. Got a lot of left side damage, so going hard into the uh, outside wall with the left side of it. Got that window net down, it's always it's a great, great sign. Flat in the left side, Daryl. Sure did, and it got in that wall hard and mostly all down the left side of the car. Got, you know, these drivers now have so many. They got the Hans device or the Hutchins device, or and they got leg supports and the big headrest on the seats. There's this Hans device. Just fell off on the ground right there. And you know, with all that stuff on the driver, uh, if if he has to get out in a hurry, he'll figure out a way. But uh, nonetheless, it still takes a little bit more time to get out than he used to. Part is okay. Out of the race car. And here come the leaders to pit road. Twenty-one car, uh, twenty-one car was closing up on the uh, on Jack Sprague. How about it, Jeffrey? All right, Daryl. What they're looking to do is make a little bit of an adjustment, try to make him a little bit faster. Jack Sprague brings it in. They're looking to go about a half a round down in the right rear, trying to make his car rotate better off the corner, man. Well, Jeff, on the bottom of your screen, the Marines car, Bobby Hamill Jr. comes to a stop. Red Wanky, his crew chief, asked him, do you need to be freed up just a little bit more? He says, no, the car, honestly, is almost perfect. But what they are going to do is shuffle the air pressures in the front so the car will not bottom out as the 57 is going to beat everybody off pit road. So the car will not bottom out as much as it was before. Light is off atop the pack. Hey, question, can you just do a buddy at the start of the race? Or oh, yeah. No, no, no. It's only for the start. Okay. That's okay. the thing Parker messed up on last night. You don't I do a buddy on the start. Well, you tried to redeem himself. Yeah. Well, I, that's okay. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. No, it's the start of the race thing. That's it. The rest of them are just uh, the typical, practical, normal. Green flag. Go, go, go. Green, green, green. And two cars. Jason Keller's at the point. Win. 
win the guitar. What you get for winning here at Nashville. I don't know why he can't play that, but it would be nice to have, I guess. We, we don't know if he can play the guitar. We know he can't sing, but... <laughs> Maybe he can play the guitar, he just can't sing. Right. Sammy Kershaw, he never could play a guitar. He made a lot of money just carrying a saddlebag. You were right, Johnny Sauter did jump to the start. Great, so... <laughs> Yeah, when, when you're on the inside line there, you're not on the pole. <laughs> no. no. Not now. Johnny Sutter will be black flag. Jack Sprague just got around Jason Keller, who took two tires on his stop. Tony Raines in the 33, starting to drop a little bit. Back into the fifth position. Oh, he's dropping a lot. He's in trouble. Two cars on two runs. That's penalty. And Kerry Earnhardt has also been black flagged, jumping the restart. Rain finally makes it to pit road. Boy, what a sick feeling, running third. Mm. Well, that, that Biffle really, really is after. He got back in the throttle hard, and he's closing up, and here he goes. He's going to make a run on Sprague down the back straightway. Biffle makes the pass for the lead. We made that look easy. Right down the back stretch into three. Made the pass. Has the lead. Almost like what they did with Sprague's car this last time in. This particular set of tires or some adjustment they made on that car. That car's not as happy as it was a few laps ago. Biffle trying to win his second race in a row. Won at Dover a week ago. The other thing, Daryl, and you mentioned it too, he wants back in the points race. He's 155 behind spray coming into the season. Well, there's no better way to get back in than to win races. Uh, that's how you get back in it. That's a win-win. Running in the sixth spot, Wimmer is, and working on Jay Sauter here. Boy, Wimmer had to go high around Tony Raines. Sauter. Whoo! You know, it is it, it is hard to drive a wounded race car. It's it's hard to drive a slow race car. Period on a track when the cars are going this fast and they run up on you so quickly and you never are sure which way to go. That's it's why the driver just it holds your line. It's hard to stay out of the way. It's hard to get out of the way. Winner of the 23 makes it by Tony Raines. Tony Raines was an ASA champion. Yes, he was. And another guy, I just happened to look, look from down the run down here, another guy that's back in the 75 car back there, Butch Miller, former ASA champion, having a pretty decent night here as well. Butch running in the 17th position. Kenny Wallace in the 48, he's seventh. Kenny had a problem qualifying. He told me that when he qualified, he did, just didn't, the car wouldn't go. And when they went out for happy hour, the engine blew up. So he said apparently the engine was going south on him when, the, when he qualified. And then uh, that's why he had to start in the back. They yeah. had to change engines. And there you see the serial score. started at 38 because of that engine change. Change motor, you have to go to the rear of the field. He's, he's always, you know how Kenny's always facing DW people were beating me. I've never heard of. <laughs> he said, I knew something had to be wrong. <laughs> I got a problem. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> but like all good crew people, we'll fix it. There you go. Here's Butch Miller. Here's Butch. He's having a really good night here, just kind of quietly. Minding his own business, and he's running in the 17th spot right now. Actually, he moved up a spot. He's in 60. Got by a... Uh, LePage in a 37 car. You know, Jeremy, you're talking about the ASA series, the American Speed Association. It's a Midwest-based series. And, and you said it earlier, those guys work on their race cars. Martin Martin won four championships there. Russell Wallace raced there. They build race cars. Yeah, and the leader of that whole pack, you always think about Bobby Allison kind of being the leader of the Alabama game. Uh, Dick Trickle was the leader of that whole crowd, and uh, he was kind of like the godfather to all those guys. And we've got a battle for the lead shaping up. Here comes Jack Sprague. 25 laps to go, Daryl. Yep. 
Looks like it's uh, the way Biff's going right now. He's running the fastest laps I've seen all night. He's at a 30-16 right now. And uh, very consistently running those lap speeds and just a skosh quicker uh, than Jack Sprague right now. Sprague to the inside. There you go. You get a nice low line off a of turn four there. You can get a guy pushed up a little bit. You can get that nose under him and then you got to hold it in there all the way down here. Whoa, Biffle does not want to give up the lead, but he's going to pay the price. Drive it in hard, but you can't keep it. You just can't keep the car down. Opens the door for Sprague to get the run down the back. Biffle will fight back on the outside. No, he thinks better of it. Ten to go. Ten miles. As I went through the garage earlier today, not that so been there and told me to watch Jack Sprague tonight. All they were talking about was the 60 and the 25, that they were the cars that, to beat. And Sprague has dominated this race. He's been up front all night long. Had great pit stops. I'm really impressed with the pit stop. That's how it goes, Steve. When, when everything's going your way, you, you know, you're driving, the car's running good, the driver's doing a good job. It seems like the pit crew always steps up. Finished second here in yeah. April. The points leader coming in here. Yeah. She's the tire specialist on the 24. Biting her nails. The reason they're biting, biting her nails, nails is because that 25 is just, just close enough that it would keep you being real confident that you got this thing in the bag. One slip by Sprague. No really traffic in front. of got a clear racetrack. So uh, there's no reason to believe you'll have a problem. But uh, the 25 just keeps nibbling away. Gets closer and closer. And then, I don't know if Sprague is uh, trying to hold him at bay. The gap there or what's going on? It's a 24. Another great night though for that 25 car, and of course this will be uh, Sprague's first win. In 90 starts. And like, like we said earlier on in the, in the telecast, new race tracks, you know, sometimes favor the, the drivers. It's a clean sheet of paper. Right? It's kind of no, no real advantage to anyone. We had a graphic earlier that showed top of Stacy Cobden. Yeah. So that's enough. No, they're fighting for 11th place right there. The slow car is going to cause Stacy to lose the battle. Ooh, splitting. Brad Teague in the 77. He said a minute ago, we saw Crawford earlier. Biffle won here a year ago. Riggs won here earlier. First time winner, both of them. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't think, you know, when you got a new racetrack, there's nobody got a real advantage. Uh, just. The uh, teams with the most experience, maybe, are the ones that end up on top. Just behind the leaders, there's Biffle in third, yep. Jay Sauter in fourth. He just got his hands full right now. He's hurt his arm, he's wounded now, and he's just really having to fight hard hang on to what he's got. And on board with Jason Keller in fifth. Running out laps, but that's okay with Jack Spurman. Oh yeah, it's not too bad. Lap traffic's not going to help him any. He gets got to work through all this. Uh, but like I said, the 25 just close enough to worry. Gets by the lap car of Tony Raines. Mike the rain been at his highest third. Oh, we were bragging on him in his backup car. What a great night he was having. And the next thing you know, he spun out. a few sparks coming from underneath Jack Sprague's car, but I think he's getting excited to I think he's trying to figure out how to no, I can't play that guitar. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> It'll look good on the wall. How about that with the Sam Van Rage right. job? I guarantee you Rick Hendrick will figure out something to do with it. Jack, I'm going to sell it back to Rick. So here, how much you give me the guitar? Two laps to go for Jack Sprague. 
just think about Henry Motorsports. I mean, Jack Sprague wins the truck championship, goes in that series and dominates. And uh, they stuff they're going to run. Rick, Ricky and uh, Jack both up to the Bush Series this year. And here Jack is right out here just like he did in the truck series on his way to his first victory and leading the championship. Piece of cake. White flag for Jack Sprague. About a half a mile from his first NASCAR Bush Series victory. very consistent race car, a very dominant race car. And here he comes to take the check and flag here in the Nashville Super Speedway. Jack Sprague's going to win his first NASCAR Bush Series event in the Nashville Super Speedway. Another first time winner. Three for three at the Nashville Super Speedway. Great run for Bobby Hamilton Jr. Comes home in second place. Another good run for him. Hard. Came home third, held off Sauter, Jay Sauter, and uh, Jason Keller, Kenny Wallace, Scott Wimmer. Hey, how about Hank Parker? And uh, Shane Meal. Hi. And Ricky Hendrick finished 15. You're talking about Hendrick yep. Motorsports just a second ago. He knows how to do donuts. I'm seeing him doing the truck. He burned the tires off of Richmond last year. One of the most awesome burnouts I've ever seen. He's melting them down. <laughs> Jack Sprague is about to pull into victory lane for the first time in the NASCAR Bush Series. Taking a look at our unofficial results. I know what song he can play. What? Someday you'll be fast like me. Ha <laughs> ha. Right, Yoakum, baby. I'd be cranking down on her right now. Or you could sing Toby Keith, How Do You Like Me Now? Woo! Or I want to talk about me. me. <laughs> <laughs> and the hits just keep coming. <laughs> Larry Foyt, the last car on the lead lap. Hey, there's Stead, uh, Brad Baker and Stedman Marlin, a couple of local boys that got their start out here at the fairgrounds. Nashville Cats. Not too bad a job. Jack Sprague led four times for 144 laps this evening. Started fifth. And he comes home the winners. Fireworks off the backstretch. Good night for Jack Sprague all around. He came in with a points lead. He goes home. Yeah, he did. And uh, Keller and Riggs changed places again. They do that about every week, seems like. And Biffle, Biffle up come up a little spot. bit. Yep. Bobby Jr. up there in fifth. Got us a good little point battle going on here. We got it going on here in the Bush Series. Top five separated by just 213 points. There's Jack Sprague, and Matt Yoakum is with him. Go, Matt. Well, DW, back in 1992, he scored a second. He scored a second twice this year. Bridesmaid, much like Harry Gant in his early Winston Cup days, always a bridesmaid until he finally broke through and Sprague. Yeah and then waiting to break through, and he climbs out, finally! A Bush Grand National Series winner, very careful of the car, as it goes into the mosh pit. Big celebration ensues, they've earned it. Bush flying in the air. But Jack, you've waited for this a long time. Does reality finally match that dream of getting into Bush Series victory lane? 10 years, baby. We've been working at this for 10 years, and uh, Man, it's awesome. This feels as good as my first truck win. Uh, it's unbelievable. We had a great time out there. Rick gives us great stuff. Motor was awesome. Guys have gotten better continuously all year. Net Zero Chevrolet was great, man. It started out the night there. Hey, baby. We started out the night and we were loose in daytime. I thought, well, did you want me just? I said, no, I think it'll come. And uh, it actually get a little tight at the end of the runs. But, uh, man, I tell you, it was awesome. It's great. And I'd like to thank everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, all our sponsors, GMAC, Net Zero, Quaker State. There you go. Pause, Delphi, it's awesome. Now you want a Les Paul Gibson guitar in the trucks at the old fairgrounds. How special is it to win one here at the new track? This sucker's got flames. This is a bad one. I tell you what, I wanted that guitar bad when I saw it in the driver's meeting. And the team's wanted to win bad. I mean, we've been close. We could have in Texas here in the spring. Man, we just, you know, the, the newspapers were starting to say, we're doing everything right except winning. Well, now we want a race. So uh, maybe it'll get off me a little bit, but man, this team's awesome. Warham couldn't make the triple crown today at the Belmont, but Jack Sprague makes it 
three straight for first time winners here at Nashville. So tonight, it's Jack Sprague who gets to pose in victory lane, and hold up that trophy. Oh yeah, and that guitar did have flames on it, and that's what's going to make it special. For Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Hammond, and Matt Yoakum, I'm Steve Burns saying thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.